Well, good morning. Today is the 1st of April, April Fool's Day to some. So a few interesting facts from April the 1st. Firstly, in 1318, Berwick-upon-Tweed was captured by Scotland from England. Make your own judgment of why that would happen on April the 1st. 1924, Adolf Hitler was sentenced to five years imprisonment for his part in the Beer Hall Push. In fact, he only served nine months of that, so I wonder what that says about the judicial system at the time. 1975, Apple Inc. was founded by Steve Jobs on Friends on April Fool's Day, as well. In 1989, Margaret Thatcher introduced the community charge to Scotland. Not sure if that's anything to do with what happened at Berwick-upon-Tweed, Berwick what, 600 and so years ago. Well, happy birthday today also to Chris Galing, Chris Evans and Philip Schofield. Again, not making any judgment connection between April Fool's Day and them. But I do want to bring us to God's word on today. Um, we're doing these little studies in Mark's gospel. And uh, if you've got a Bible, why don't you turn to Mark chapter 1. And the last few mornings we've been in chapter 1. And we looked at uh, John the Baptist and Jesus when he was tempted. This morning we're going to look about the call of the very first disciples. Um, Jesus goes and meets them in Galilee. So if you've got a Bible, why don't you turn with us now. And uh, I'm just going to pray before we read. Lord Jesus, guide us as we just spend just a few moments at the beginning of a day. Reflecting upon you, reflecting on your word. Speak to every one of us who is tuning in, who is watching here never near or far, to know that your word is active. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me read this passage to you from Mark chapter 1. It says, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. And when he'd gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This well-known passage um, centres around this particular call of Jesus to people. Um, at that time, rabbis were uh, well-known in that particular era. John the Baptist, for example, had his own followers and disciples. But it's this kind of, not random, but very intentional moment where Jesus comes to specific people, these fishermen, Peter, Simon Peter, his brother, Andrew, James and John, and calls them to follow him. I wonder if you can know that sense of call to follow Jesus. This is not just an exclusive call just for these particular people at that particular time. This is something he calls to all of us. In Acts 17, chapter, uh, verse 30, it says, Now he commands all people, the Apostle Paul preached in Athens everywhere, to repent. There's a call for all of us to become followers of Jesus. In fact, the term follower of Jesus is something one that I use much more frequently today. I sometimes think that um, when we talk about being a Christian, sometimes that can be misunderstood by people who just assume that's religion and following a set of rituals. And it can also detract from the attention from the very person that we're called to follow. Interesting, when Jesus came, he told them to follow me, not follow a ritual not follow a, a set of rules. Prayer and all these godly disciplines are there and are good in the proper place. But the centre of their faith that comes to this call to follow Jesus, the centre of our call is to be called followers of Jesus. And I wonder if that's something you can describe yourself as a follower of Jesus. We also follow lots of different things. We follow people on social media. People follow football teams, although in this current season that seems somewhat irrelevant. Following fashions or hobbies or other ideals and interests. 
Will this call to follow me come to a call for a purpose? In this passage, what's so remarkable that these fisher men were called to be called fishers of men. An interesting play of words, and it could sound like it's some really slightly bizarre extreme sport, going out with your angling rod trying to catch men. Well, he, Jesus is using his play on their understanding of their culture and their skills. There was something higher purpose than catching fish, something that he wanted them to call them to do. And that was called to live differently, a change of perspective. There was some significance that they were called to call other people, not to follow Peter or Andrew or James or John, but in turn to call others to follow Jesus. Jesus is going around preaching this uh, message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins but he also wants them to call and to train equip them he says notice i will make you fishers of men sometimes in in life some of us feel very inadequate as followers of jesus you may be even in christian ministry and i've got to say sometimes as a pastor i feel sometimes inadequate in my role but reminded that it's not necessarily about me if i'm a follower of jesus i trust I look to Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, to make me the person he wants to be. Jesus says, I will make you fishers of men. So I hope you know this kind of sense of call, this call to follow him. And if you're thinking you're inadequate in yourself, you're in good company. Not only did Peter and others, but many feel inadequate in that sense of call. But Jesus says, I will make you. A call comes with a cost. There's always a cost in following Jesus. There's things they had to leave behind. They left their businesses. They left at times family. But there was also that reward of that call. The kingdom of heaven brought so much joy and a higher sense of purpose. But what is your response to that call? Some of you responded when you're younger perhaps to follow Jesus. Perhaps today could be a day when you're committing yourself to follow him afresh and anew. But some of our calls is not necessarily to down our tools and go to new places. Let me finish with this short story that I read about uh, from the 11th century about King Henry III of Bavaria. He grew really tired of his court life and the pressures of being a monarch. Sounds like a familiar story from our current royal family. So he made an application to Prior Richard at a local monastery asking to be accepted as a complimentary and spend the rest of his life in the monastery. Well, Prior Richard responded like this. He said, Your Majesty, do you understand that the pledge here has one obedience, and that will be hard because you have been a king? Henry replied, I understand. The rest of my life I will be obedient to you as to Christ, as he leads you. Then, said Prior Richard, I tell you what to do. Go back to your throne and serve faithfully in the place where God has put you. And when King Henry died, a statement was written, the king learned to rule by being obedient. When Jesus calls, he asks us to be obedient to follow his call. And that might be to be in the place, very place that you are now serving for him. Let's be good followers of Jesus today. Let me pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, I'd rather be a fool for Christ than be wise in the world. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we'd be good followers of you. For everyone facing challenges of what that means today, in a new home environment, be it working out how to live differently. For those on the front line, Lord, those in our care and, and health services, we pray that we will be good followers of Jesus today, reflecting you to the world around you but knowing that you've called us to be bearers of your good news in word and deed. God bless. Keep looking to Jesus.